Okay, everyone, we want to bring uh, to order the water, Murfreesboro Water Resources Board meeting. And before we get into the agenda, I need to uh, make a brief statement. Consistent with the governor's order and the declaration of emergency with the city, members of the city council are all participating by electronic means as has been determined necessary to protect public health, safety, and welfare in light of the coronavirus pandemic. Okay, Darren, we're ready to go with the agenda. Yes, sir. All right, uh, the first item on our agenda is our consent agenda, A through H. Does anybody care to pull out any particular item? Working out here? Yes. Okay, tell him to stop the noise. Does anybody care to, to, to uh, discuss any of the uh, consent agendas individually? John, I make a motion to approve. Got a motion from Brian Kidd to approve. Second. Got a second by Kirk Wade. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If you all will, uh, would you give your motion or second, please say who you are, please. All right, we have a motion to approve and a proper second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. We, aye. How uh, we do uh, this? Aye. I think we need to do a roll call, John, just to uh, okay. just to make sure. So uh, I'll do that. Oh, do Michelle, roll call? Thank you. Yeah, Michelle, do you want to do the roll call? I can. Okay. Ron Crabtree. Ron, you're on mute. Here. You're on mute. There you go. Aye. Kathy Noble. Aye. Dr. Carter. Aye. Mr. Santamore. Aye. Sandra Trail. Aye. And uh, Madeline Scales Harris. Aye. All right, so motion approved. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the Shelton Square participation in proposed sanitary sewer assessment district. Mr. Gore. Uh, one, point, one quick question, Michelle, did you get Brian Kidd on that? He made the motion to us. Do I need to ask him again? I'll, I. Okay. That just makes it clear. And Kurt Wade, I may as well get you again too. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, don't forget the minutes, John. Thank you, Michelle. Second <laughs> item on our agenda are the minutes. Um, where are they here? The minutes from our previous meeting. March the 3rd. March the 3rd. I've got to go back and forth here. Uh, does anybody have any additions or corrections to the minutes from March the 3rd? Do we, do we need a roll call on this or can we accept that as uh, submitted? I, I think we typically accept that as submitted if there's no revisions, John. <laughs> okay. Then we'll move forward. The next item on our agenda was the Shelton Square participation and proposed sanitary sewer assessment district. Mr. Gore. Yes, sir. I'm going to share my screen. If I can do that, share. Um, what you see in front of you uh, outlined in green is Shelton Square. It's a uh, development that was approved uh, a year, year and a half ago, uh, and has 700 some odd single family units um, in that development. As part of that development, we knew there's a pump station that serves it, and we knew that there were some surrounding properties that were, had high potential for development and, and needed to use that 
that uh, pump station in Sel Shelton Square. We didn't want to we didn't want to have four or five pump stations out there exclusive to each development. So what we did is we worked with uh, Parks to get that uh, uh, pump station upsized. Now I don't think it, it it costs any additional money to get the pumps upsized, but we did have to go from an eight inch force main to a 12 inch force main. And that was uh, about a $250,000 participation that the department had with the developer. So what we've done is identify these, these parcels and we, if we wanted to recoup that 250,000 plus the, uh, the time value of money, which we have roughly at around $30,000, um, we're saying that uh, each of those units, which there would a potential of 638, would uh, have, a, have an additional assessment of $500 on top of the standard connection fee and the overall creek connection fee. So right now, Shelton Square, for example, the, the, the units outlined in, in green, they pay the $2,550 for a capacity buy-in, plus they pay $1,000 for the overall creek special assessment. So 3,550 total. The units that we're talking about uh, recouping the cost of the force main would pay that 2,550 for the capacity buy-in, the additional thousand for the overall creek sewer assessment district, and then an additional $500 if we created this assessment district uh, to recoup the cost of the, the upsize of the force main. So they would be, instead of 3,550, they would be $4,050 dollars per single family unit. And so it just applies to those four outlying lots, right? Yes. I mean, there's always the potential, the way we've worked this in the past is let's say uh, there's another, let's say there's another hundred unit development or another 200 unit development that, that comes online out there. We really, uh, the way we've structured all of our other assessments is the first 638 units, uh, which is what we've, uh, estimated uh, the first 100, 638 units that come in and buy in and pay that, if they pay that off, then that 639th unit would not pay it because it would have uh, officially, you know, effectively been, been, been paid in full. So this is a situation where it's kind of the first come gets the first serve, but they're also paying the assessment. And in some instances, the latter developments or the de developments that are occurring later uh, may not be subject to the assessment fee if it's already been pay, uh, paid off. Does that make sense? Correct. So we're really, we're really looking at 638 units. And if some of these other, I'm going to use my little pointer here, this area or this area, or even, uh, you know, some of these lots over here on the other side of uh, Blackman uh, Road develop and tie in, then again, they would just go towards that 638 total. Um, just to bring this up is we did, you know, we had a, this is only, this is $250,000, which is, you know, a lot of money to me. Uh, but we did have something similar in the Wilkinson Pike area that we thought it may be, uh, that we didn't necessarily need to do it um, uh, because it wasn't a multi-million dollar project. But uh, I'd leave that at the board's discretion, whether or not you want to recoup this this two hundred fifty thousand dollars or uh, or not. But our recommendation would be to go ahead and set it up and and recoup it. Uh, every little bit uh, that we expend that we can recoup, it it helps our our uh, working capital reserve balance. And it has no ending date. It goes. We don't. We're not tied to ten or twenty years on this. Correct. We've we've taken all of our assessment districts and and g given them uh, moved them to an in per perpetuity type deal that they don't end until they get paid off. And as you all know, we are adding uh, that one percent foregone earnings since that money's not sitting in our bank account and we're not earning uh, about one point or of of earnings while it sits there. We are looking at recouping that one that one point annually that we're losing uh, uh, as far as foregone foregone earnings. Okay. 
So the, the short answer is no, we would not have an end date to this. <laughs> okay. All right. As uh, are you through, or do or we are you got I'm, some I'm, more? We want to. Do I need to ask for a motion, or you got some more? We we can open any, it up. Anybody have a question for? Uh, And I'd be remiss too. Valerie, Valerie did the 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 yeoman's work here, so she's really the one that pulled this together. I'm just presenting it, so she's she and I both are available for questions if you have any. And if you don't, we can uh, we'll accept no, a recommendation. If no questions. We'll accept a motion. I guess, Darren, my only question would be: at the four developments there, have you had any feedback from any of those developers within those four developments at all? I have not personally. Valerie, uh, have you had any comments or uh, discussions? I have had discussions with Matt Taylor of SEC about the uh, highlighted property on the, I guess, the bottom of the page, the southern end, the 213 units. They have already approached um, the planning department. Uh, I um, as far as an annexation and uh, and have a plan book, but it has not, they kind of put it on hold. Uh, that is the only one other than the 88 units uh, to the right. That one has been approved uh, as a project and they should start construction here fairly quickly. Uh, the one on the west and the north, uh, I have not had contact with anyone on those two. All right, Darren, uh, uh, Brian, you have any questions regarding that? No, I don't. Thank you. Are there any other questions? If there are no other questions, then we will entertain a motion to uh, approve or reject. This is Sandra, and I do believe we should be recouping it. I move for approval. I'll second. All right, got a motion from Sandra and a second from Dr. Carter. Any further discussion? All those in favor, we will have a roll call. Uh, Michelle? Mr. Crabtree? You're muted here. Uh, one more time. Ron. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Okay. Ms. Nobles? Aye. Dr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Santamore? Aye. Ms. Trail? Aye. Mr. Kidd? Aye. Ms. Uh, Harris? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Thank you. All right, motion approved. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the uh, specific energy pump asset management for the high service pump at the water treatment plant. Yep. Uh, again, Alan, Alan has done uh, the work on this and I'm just going to be presenting it. Of course, Mike, Mike Bernard is on the, the call as well. Um, so they can answer maybe any technical questions. If you have any, I'm trying, I'm going to try to give the elementary school version of uh of uh, what this is about. It's a really neat product. I think uh, it is a game changer as Mike would attest on how pumps are using variable frequency drives uh, are operated uh, no longer manually, but, but, but uh, automatically using this intelligent software. So I'm gonna give a brief uh, PowerPoint just so you all can, can be acquainted with it and understand uh, where staff is on uh, uh, kind of uh, advocating or, or requesting the approval to purchase this. So specific energy, it is, a, it is a software package. It's for pump asset management and optimization. I won't get into too much of, of what a curve looks like, but let's just say if you have a, the, this is how you look at pump curves. You've got a flow on the X-axis and head or pressure on the Y-axis. 
And if you, you, you try to keep your pump into this green range, uh, it's, if you get into the red, you have pump damage, cavitation, excessive vibration, recirculation. So just to give you an example, this is our overall creek, one of the impellers of our overall creek. And when you're operating in a bad part of the pump curve, cavitation uh, and, and uh, this recirculation and so forth, it can, it can start to wear out the uh, efficiency of the impeller because it just creates undue wear on the edge of the impeller. So it starts to really create an inefficient pump. So you're actually drawing more power and more energy and you're not pumping as much as you would expect because the performance has gone down. So what this is ultimately doing, again, this is kind of a specific energy curve. This software, if you look at kind of the saddle or the low point in this, this software is trying to keep that pump where it is uh, in the highest performing position, meaning it's pumping as much as it can pump with the lowest amount of energy or the lowest amount of electrical costs. Okay, and these are just smart guys that have figured out because a variable frequency drive uh, back, I'd even say 15 or 20 years ago, a pump was a constant speed pump. So you really just had one point of operation with a variable frequency drive, what that does is it can speed up the pump or it can slow down the pump. So now instead of a single point of operation, you've almost got a window of operation. And this window of operation, like I said, sometimes it can get into this bad operating position. And really there was just a, no way of, of operators to know, um, know that it was getting out of that, that, that optimal performance point. So our high, the, the request we've got today is uh, the uh, high service pump stations uh, at the water, Stones River Water Treatment Plant. You can see that there's been a, um, an annual, the blue line is what the energy usage of those pumps have had really from 2009 through 2019. Uh, we've got the cost of energy at 9.2 cents Per kilowatt hour. We see what our uh, annual energy cost is, which is the 428,000. I think I can do, let me see if I can get my pointer options here, a laser pointer. Yeah, okay. So 428,000 is what we annually pay for power on those pumps. With the specific energy, we're saying that we believe we can see a 6.4% annual savings and so what does that mean? Uh, what that means is it's about a $27,000 annual savings. So the cost of the software is 15,000 and then there's a $10,000 annual uh, service fee because this is a cloud-based system and uh, it is hosted and, and basically, uh, uh, well, just hosted on, on, a, uh, on the cloud. But even with that, 20, if you, we experience that $27,313 annually, you can see down here where the green line kind of crosses the red. Each one of those steps kind of uh, demonstrates that $10,000 uh, annual fee, but we effectively pay for it in one year and five months. And so that's a really good uh, payback. Uh, I think in most, even most industrial applications, if you're within, if you're under two years, even under three or four years, um, it's a good uh, it's a good return on investment that you want to move forward. So that's that's and, and these are I have to say we, if you see if you notice up here on reduced repair cost, uh, I made Mike make put that in at zero. Uh, there will be some savings in reduced repair costs. So this is a very 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 conservative payback. More than likely, uh, I mean this is just a straight off the top of our power bill money that we will save but there will be inherent cost of uh, savings when we don't have to repair these pumps as often. So getting kind of into our, uh, uh, you know, our effective utility management model, we've always looked for these predictive KPIs and that's what this ultimately is. This isn't our pump station, but this, this is another pump station that, that Mike gave us the data on that instead of a run to failure, 
which is what we typically do now. We just run, that's why we're so redundant. You know, we, if we need two pumps, then we put in three pumps. If we need one pump, we put in two because at the end of the day, we're running these things to failure. And that second pump is typically just our third pump is a backup. Well, now we're looking at running to a positive net present value. So now we can actually look at, hey, before this thing fails, when is it getting inefficient? When is it getting so inefficient that it justifies replacing it so that we replace that pump, not to failure, but when it starts, uh, we can put a new pump in and start recapturing uh, power costs and say repair savings costs and things like that. So that's really uh, kind of the, the the philosophy or the the the, the analytical uh, logic behind what this software is about. We're looking at putting this on several pump stations just to give you a heads up. And, but we're going to run through a business model or a business case on each one of these. To and, and again, I like very conservative assumptions. Mike knows where I'm at on those. But uh, we're we're looking at installing this so that it 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 gives us that savings and that return on investment and gives us that predictive uh, key performance indicator. Uh, so I'll quit talking. And if you all have questions, be glad to uh, answer them or Mike or Alan can, and otherwise would, would love to. Any, any questions for Mr. Gore? When, do you, when does this go online, Darren? Well, I would say, I think it's a very, and Mike, you can say as soon as we get the purchase order approved, I would say it's a pretty, pretty quick installation time. Is that right, Mike? We actually started working on this at risk. And the reason was, is that we want to use this software as well to, uh, to pick a better pump to go in the fourth spot in the high service pumps. And uh, so uh, we're already a good way down the road and um, we're, we're hoping that uh, assuming that the city council approves this, that we'll be able to turn this loose, maybe even as little as a week after that. We've been working on it for a couple of weeks now. I, I will say that we are typically, uh, uh, people like putting things in at our, at our facilities as a showcase. Uh, sometimes we get the privilege of being the lost leader, as they say, where people come in and uh, maybe even give us a really cut cut rate deal so that they can uh, showcase their their product to other folks that visit our plants a lot not saying mike's doing that now but i'm saying he that's why he's probably <laughs> he wants he wants to uh demonstrate the power or the effectiveness of this software this is alan uh one thing i'd like to add too is when we put it in for the uh, uh our raw water intakes uh we thought we were operating the pumps on the curve and everything was going great. But as soon as we had visibility of the pumps, we realized that we were actually operating the pump off the curve. And I, that's in your memo that I sent. Um, and it identifies the fact that, you know, it was put in on December the 5th and on December the 9th, when we realized that we were operating the pump off the curve, we modified our operations in order to get the pump back where it should be so that we were not getting cavitation excess wear. It's important to note that this is a failure of our industry that we've never given the operators the tool that they need uh, to know where these pumps are operating and how to do it right. So it's not any fault of the operators at all. You guys have some of the best operators I've ever met. And uh, that's, that's why I'm so excited about this product. That's why I've decided to go and represent them is this is something that I literally started looking for for Murfreesboro 12 years ago. And it took me 12 years to find anything like this. All right, any other questions? If this not, is Kathy and I move for approval. All right, Kathy, we got a motion from Kathy. Second. Kurt. Second from Mr. Wade. Michelle, if you'll call roll, please. Mr. Crabtree. Yes. Ms. Noble. Aye. Dr. Carter. Aye. Mr. Santa Moore. Aye. Ms. Trail. Aye. Mr. Kidd. Aye. Ms. Harris. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. 
Thank you. Okay, motion passes. Uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, a Hazen and Sawyer Regulatory Assistance Task Order for our 2021 permit. Mr. Gore? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, I don't know if I'm coming through. It's telling me that my internet connection is unstable. I don't know if you all can hear me okay. Yes, we can. I can. I can. Okay, yeah. good, good. Okay. Um, I may switch to my, my hotspot on my phone in a second. Yeah. So I'm going to, again, I've just got one, uh, one slide here. Well, let me get to this. That's not it. Uh, huh, weird. It's not showing up here. Let me do this real quick, y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I had this thing up. I feel your pain on this. <laughs> well, let's see. Let me do this real quick. Sorry. Uh, huh. All right. Let me pull it. I, I got it here. It's in my. Here we go. All right. Share screen. Here we go. This is a uh, kind of a, uh, uh, I've shown you this flow chart before. So when you look at the top um, blocks where it's got TMI, let me bring up my laser pointer again. Well, I'm gonna just proceed, sorry. The uh, it says TMI sampling results, TDEC endorsement for 303D removal and biological assessment criteria. We've since 2014 been, been doing uh, stream assessments on the West Fork uh, Stones River that have come back shown outstanding uh, health of the stream uh, and the uh, macroinvertebrates that are in the stream. So what I'm, I've been calling those the real-time performance indicators and we've been going out. And so our goal is to get off the 303D list which we've been, we've been successful on one large section of West Fork, not so much on some smaller sections. The bottom box, we just got, that used to, I used to have that in red, but it's, it's the waste load allocation model and the TDEC endorsement, uh, no anti-degradation or backsliding, in, so we could ultimately get increased loading limits. Both of those things, the biological assessment and the waste load allocation model, we wanted to build a new permit rationale. And that, that may have been a little overly um, optimistic, but, but it was something we were trying to, to get buy-in with TDEC and get, get, their, uh, get their trust, get their, their, their partnership in, in looking at Murfreesboro as an exception to what they typically see since all of our numbers were coming back so well. Ultimately, the goal was to get our 2021 NPDES permit approved uh, with expanded limits so that we would have the opportunity to expand the, uh, the waste uh, the water resource recovery facility at some point in the future. We all know we've gone through the, uh, the sanitary sewer allocation. We're looking at somewhere between, you know, around 26,000 units of capacity that are remaining uh, single family unit capacity in our, in our current plant. So we know that, that that's a 10 to 12 year lifetime or life uh, expected life of the current plant capacity. Um, Rutherford County is slated and Murfreesboro specifically is slated for very significant growth. So we've, we've created this package and it's not that this package is perfect. Uh, 
say a Qualls Hickey, she's on the she's on the Zoom meeting with us, and I I think I promoted her in my uh, email I sent to everybody. She was the chief engineer for the for the TDEX uh, water resource section, not the director, but uh, she was in a, a position of making uh, decisions and working through the uh, kind of the uh, the regulations and the guidelines and and what I would call hoops of of working people through their permit approval process. So she is now with Hazen and Sawyer. Uh, we've, we've worked with Hazen and Sawyer in the past. Uh, so we've had a have good experience with them. But Saya has relationships and connections still in, uh, within TDEC that we really need to be honestly leverage. Uh, I would love to say that we have been successful over the past six years, seven years as my tenure as director in establishing a a great working relationship with TDEC staff that has not necessarily happened. Um, there's just still a level, I think, of, of maybe distrust or maybe that we're, we're, they don't see us as the exception that we see ourselves. Uh, and we may not be. I've always said that we wanted to, uh, you know, we want to ultimately be good stewards to our water resources and we don't want to inundate or, or overload uh, a stream that, that, that can't handle or assimilate our, our waste load. So uh, Saya has pulled together a pretty expansive uh, task order uh, for us. It's basically tasks one through six. Those are summarized in your, in your uh, agenda item, but basically pulling in all the data that we've pulled in, we've, we've created over the past six or seven years and, and have them review that, benchmark us against other uh, WERFs or other communities, uh, utilities, coordinate with the reg you know, regulatory coordination and, and develop a compliance plan. Again, work through uh, supporting our stream assessments. And then uh, again, working with us to uh, uh, pull together our 2021 permit uh, renewal application, which that has to be submitted six months in advance. So I think that's somewhere in the September range, maybe or October range. I think it it expires in April of 2021. I may be off a month or two there, but so there's a little bit of a trigger there. And then of course, there's the on-call regulatory support as, as we as we provide information to TDEC, um, they're gonna have questions and we'll need say as assistance and Hazen and Sawyer staff assistant as we kind of go through those uh, Q and A and needing more information kind of discussions. So, uh, this is around, it's just over $200,000. It's for support expected for about a two year time, time frame. Um, I really believe it's imperative that we, that we engage with, with Saya and Hazen to move the ball forward as I just don't have confidence that, uh, that I can move it forward the way it needs to be, the way it needs to be done. Um, and of course, Mike is, is, is moving on to specific. Uh, Mike's going to still be available on call to us with SSR, but but his full time gig is going to be more in the specific energy uh, uh, solution. So, uh, not that Mike can be replaced, and not to say he's going to replace Mike, but at the same time, we really need um, some some expertise and the ability to work within TDAC. So we would uh, we're, we're she's here, and I'm available for questions. Uh, or uh, we would solicit your recommendation. Did John leave? I'm here. So what, what's, uh, do you have a probability of what, how successful we can or can't be during this? I need to unmute, unmute my uh, microphone. I think what, what I can, what I can assure you is that we're, we're going to leave no stone unturned in getting the right answer to Murfreesboro for their regulatory issues. And we wanna make sure that they have a permit that is fair and effective. And I think that's, that's really what we can, we can assure, assure you guys that we, they've collected a lot of data. Uh, Darren said that he, he hasn't had an entirely great relationship with TDEC, but I do know that there are a lot of folks at TDEC 
who think that Murfreesboro is definitely going down the right path and that they're collecting the right kind of data that can be used to, to have a permit that is fair, reasonable, and protective. So I, I do think that we can, we can achieve that. Okay. Any other questions for Darren or Saya? Mr. Chairman, this is Brian. I move for approval. Mr. Kidd makes a motion to approve. Second. Second. Dr. Carter motions a sec uh, uh, gives us a second. Um, I think Darren, as Darren said in his uh, memo, it's, it's a heck of a lot of money, but it pales in comparison to what it means to us if we can get that permit. So I, I fully support this. So with that, uh, as, are there any other discussions? If not, then I'll have Michelle call the roll. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Ms. Noble? Aye. Dr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Santamore? Aye. Mr. Trail? Aye. Mr. Kidd? Aye. Ms. Harris? Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Thank you. All right, uh, the motion passes. Next item of business. And thank you, Ms. Qualls, and we appreciate it. Or, I see your, your signature, is it Ms. Qualls Hickey, or how do you Ms. wanna go? It's Ms. Qualls Hickey, I've recently married. Okay, well, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank, you, thank you, very you very much. much. Thank you, and you're welcome to hang around for the rest of this exciting meeting. Well, I think I'm going to get outside, <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> I look forward to working with you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. The next item on our agenda is the uh, Water Resources Department and Stormwater Fund draft budget. Mr. Gore. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's that time of year again. It seems to come quicker and quicker. Um, I'm going to share my screen and just uh, you guys have a pretty, pretty substantial write up. Um, and I gave you the, I gave you the PowerPoint. So you've, you've seen that as well. I'm just going to go through that uh, fairly quickly to uh, share with you what we're looking at. Uh, I'm going to, huh. Hold on. PowerPoint. It's so strange. It's it's sitting here. I'm sitting here looking at it, and let me get there. Twenty-one. It's almost like it's hidden. I'm going to share the screen. There we go. Okay. And go into PowerPoint mode, slideshow mode. All right, our FY21 draft budget. Um, starting off uh, with our revenues, we're looking at uh, around 31 million in sewer revenue, 16 and a half million water revenue, uh, and then uh, 7.6 million in tap revenue and then you've got some miscellaneous income interest income and some re some some repurified uh revenue that's a little less you know kind of smaller numbers but we're looking at 55 million 541 thousand revenues balanced to expenses on the expense side uh, we have the admin general billing collection water and sewer o and m we have capital expenditures of 6.7 million. Uh, this is our tap transfer into sinking funds is 10.9 million. And then we have debt service at 13.6 million. 
so I went ahead and looked at our, our changes. This is just a little different look than what I've given, but our from our expense categories, we're down a percent in water operating and maintenance. We're up 1.37 in sewer, down 0.7 in customer billing and, and uh, collection, up 0.2. You can see in the capital expenditures are down almost 2%, debt service up 0.8. So the total expenditures and reserve is only up 0.2%. So it's, it's, it's a fairly, we, we were, um, you know, with the COVID-19, we pretty much kept the, the budget almost flat from, from what we had last year. Um, we did want to look at the total revenue comparison. You can see our, FY20 projection is 55.6 million. Down here, our FY21 budget is 55.5. Um, so we're down, our, we've, we've projected our water sales down about a, a percent from last year's budget. And we've, we've, uh, we do have our sewer sales expected to go up about 3.8% from last year's budget. This is the TAP revenue. You can see uh, what we put into reserves from our special sewer assessments is 2 million. For sewer taps, about 4.85 million. For water taps, about 450,000. These others, uh, the reserves, our future capital expenditures, and of course our sinking funds. We've got our Northeast Regional Pump Station, Walter Hill Dam, lift station replacement, the biosolids uh, processing equipment, and our sewer rehab. Uh, costs. So that's that. So of the we got 10.9 going into sink uh, reserves, uh, uh, tap revenue, the 7.3 million of that is the tap revenue that we expect from new from growth. Uh, personnel, we're not asking for any new personnel uh, based on our current conditions with the pandemic. However, we did have it. I, I'm calling this a deferred request where we were looking at bringing on another half uh, full-time equivalent at the water resource recovery facility, a one single family equivalent for our AMI field service and one single, uh, or one family, what am I saying? One full-time equivalent, sorry, uh, for administration, single family unit, messed up. That's again, uh, the way I think that the city's looking at it and that we're looking at it is if nothing changes and the economy doesn't rebound the way, you know, uh, or it, it just doesn't rebound, then we would, we would hold off on any new employees. If it does rebound better than expected, or if it does rebound very, very well, this may be a mid budget year type request that we would come back and request. But for now, I just wanted to, I wanted to show you that we're not asking for any new personnel and we are deferring that request until a future date, but we will come back if, if the economy and our, uh, if, if the economy supports uh, those new hires. So this is the effect, right? So we did, we also did not budget for raises or promotions. We'd had several of those identified. I think I've, I've detailed those pretty extensively in the memo, but the two and a half full-time equivalents I just mentioned, that's around 157,500 that would add to the budget cost promotions were around 26,000 and raises across the board, which would, I think we said, if we had a 3% raise uh, for, for uh, employees in our open range pay plan and a 4% uh, in pay increase in our step pay plan, that's uh, 680,000. So a total of 863,500 that would increase our uh, operating expense by 3.7%. It would increase our total budget by 1.8%. Um, again, not, not, doesn't swing the needle huge, but, but $863,000 is, is off, obviously a lot of money. Um, so these do represent a full year. If we, if we, if it happened somewhere beyond a full year, they would have be prorated accordingly. Uh, and we would find, we, we, we do have this revenue, we would look at, and I've told staff to look at some capital expenditure cuts that, that would offset this 863,000. So we would not ask for an increased budget amount of 863,500. We would find that 863,500. We would find that within the budget, uh, uh, current budget capital expenditures or our future capital expenditure reserve fund and take it out of that. 
So we would still maintain our 55.54 uh, million uh, balance budget. Uh, this is stormwater. We're looking at 3.15 million in, in uh, revenues. That's that's through our stormwater fee. Um, again, we have labor and benefits and transportation, and public education outreach, uh, general fund services, uh, city hall, uh, street sweeping, engineering, uh, capital, uh, some of some some major storm sewer repairs as part of that is about a million dollars. We've got 250,000 storm repair replacement fund and outside services at 80,000. And then we do ex look at ex uh, expensing or taking about 900,000 of that of our current uh, revenue and expensing that to the reserve fund. Uh, just a point of interest, this is our stormwater revenue history, FY10 through 19 and FY20 through 21 projected. You can see it's pretty good correlation coefficient of 0.97. But we're, you know, the, the, the stormwater fee has increased roughly $65,000 uh, annually. It's not a lot, but it's been steady since 2010. And uh, we, we, you know, is, you know, the current economy, uh, that, that may dip a little bit but we have a healthy reserve fund and, and uh, we have not incurred any debt on that, uh, on that fund. Um, you can see uh, projected to, to generate about 3.1 million this year. Our operational and maintenance expenses is 1.9. And just keep in mind that million dollar difference that does go into reserves, but that also uh, that reserve bucket is used to fund capital projects, cash on hand. So that, that 1998 million, that's just operating expenses. Uh, it doesn't include, I mean, that the difference would be used for capital projects. So we're up about 1.6% uh, from FY20 projections. And this just shows that we are looking at uh, our capital improvement plan for stormwater. We're gonna actually, the policy stays, says to stay above the blue line, which is three months of operating expenses, the green line is 12 months. So right now we're actually looking at staying above uh, the 12 month uh, operating expenses. But if we dip below that, we're not violating any of our financial policies. Uh, FY20 accomplishments, we did complete the overall creek pump station capacity. We completed the Walter Hill Dam rehab. We did get our sewer reallocation ordinance uh, to protect the city's wastewater collection system and treatment facility. Completed the installation of our small scale biosolids dryer. Completed the waste load allocation model uh, to integrate into the rationale for the TDEC review and, and our 2021 permit. And we did update watershed characteristics for pollutant reduction in our stormwater program. FY21 goals, we're gonna finalize, try to finalize the preliminary design of the Northeast Regional Pump Station, force main gravity sewer. Finalize wet weather treatment study at our, at our water resource recovery facility complete our application for 2021 uh, MPDS permit. Uh, we obviously completing the tank painting and repairs for Mill Street, Halls Hill and Tiger Hill. If you haven't seen the Mill Street tank, it's pretty much been sandblasted down to bare metal. It's a nice nice shade of gray if you uh, in the horizon if you drive by it right now. Uh, support our migration to a GIS centric uh, computerized maintenance management software, CMMS. This is a, kind of the last leg of the three legs on our on our information technology master plan um, that we're we're excited to complete and again using a detailed uh, tree coverage and info swim modeling software for our stormwater program so that's that's it pretty quick but uh, um, we would request your approval of the of the uh, FY21 water and sewer budget and stormwater budget, but I'm happy to answer questions. Any questions for Mr. Gore? A very good budget, Darren, and uh, we've got a lot of things going for us and we'll keep working hard. We appreciate it. Well, and, and I would, would say that Doug, this is again, Doug's, Doug did the, the yeoman's work uh, along with Gail Adkins and uh, uh, some other uh, members of his staff. So I get to present it, but, but, but they did the heavy lifting. All right.
right, so we'll take a, a motion to approve. I'll make the motion to approve. Mr. Uh, Wade approves, makes a motion. Al Carter. Al Car Dr. Carter is uh, second, or Ms. Trails is second. You make the call. I believe Dr. Carter was. Okay, Dr. Carter is a second. Uh, any other discussion regarding the budget? And we're going to do these both at the same time, Darren? Uh, I think it would be better to do the, uh, and Roman can weigh in, it would probably be better to do, I, I know it takes more time, but or a budget approval. Se separate them. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take a vote on the uh, Murfreesboro Water Resources Department budget. And uh, is there any other discussion on that? And we'll vote later on the stormwater. If there are no other discussions, then I'll ask Michelle to call the roll, please. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Ms. Nobles? Aye. Dr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Santamore? Aye. Ms. Trail? Aye. Mr. Kidd? Aye. Ms. Harris? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Thank you. All right, the motion passes. Now we'll entertain a motion to approve the stormwater uh, department budget. Mr. Chairman, this is Brian. I make a motion to approve the stormwater budget. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. A second. This is Kathy. Kathy no, oh, Nobles is a second. Uh, is there any other discussion? If not, then we'll ask Michelle to call the roll, please. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Ms. Nobles? Aye. Dr. Carter. Aye. Mr. Santamore. Aye. Ms. Trail. Aye. Aye. Ms. Harris. Aye. And Mr. Wade. Aye. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Gore, is there anything else to be brought before the board? No, sir. Uh, I had Doug, I asked Doug to prepare a couple of, I mean, just to make a comment about revenues uh, and, and what we see or expect to see a little bit here uh, in the next month or two with, uh, with the pandemic. So Doug, you mind just sharing that? Sure. We, uh, through March, uh, the financials, which are in the dashboard show, through March, we really didn't see any effect on revenues, but we have noticed in April that uh, commercial and industrial consumption is down. We haven't really compared back to March yet to see how much, but uh, probably next week, week after, we'll be able to dig into the April billings and see. We do expect residential to go up some since everybody's home, but not sure if that'll offset the industrial and commercial drops in consumption. I would imagine some of those commercial and industrial will kind of slow down, haven't they? Yeah. Well, I, I know we've got, you know, of course, General Mills is a very, very large water, one of our biggest customers, and I don't think they're going to have slowed down from, from the food industry standpoint. Uh, Heritage Dairies, similarly. MTSU, I can see obviously being way down because they're, they all went home. And the hotel motel usage, I would expect, would be down. And of course, food service, right? Restaurants. Uh, went down. So I, I think we'll see a pretty, a little blip. I don't know if it'll be huge, I don't, but, but I think we'll see, we'll see some decreased. Uh, and Alan, you may have seen some of that from the standpoint of being able to, we've taken a couple of the tanks out of service. You've probably seen a lesser demand uh, coming out of the plant, correct? Yes, sir. We've dropped a couple of million gallons per day uh, on the water side. Okay, thanks. All right, very good, Doug. We appreciate that. 
Uh, and also want to uh, thank everyone for behaving on this call and uh, <laughs> uh, for your patience to get through this. And I know this is a, a first for me. I know some of y'all may have been in many others, but it's first for me in this kind of setting. But I think it went on uh, rather smoothly and uh, uh, I appreciate Darren for putting this together. If there's no other uh, uh, items to come before the board, uh, we will stand adjourned. Thank you all so very much. Appreciate you. Thank you, Darren. Thanks, John. All right, see you guys. Thanks, Darren. Uh,